When you're going to connect your PLC to remote I.O. or any other device in the field using the Profibus network, you need to make use of an RS-485 or a Profibus cable. But to be able to connect the cable to the PLC or any other device on each end of the network, you first need to connect the cable to a Profibus connector. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. Here, I have a Profibus cable and a Profibus connector. We ordered this cable from Siemens, and if you're wondering about the order number, this is the order number that you can use to order the same cable if you need to use that in your project. Just Google the order number, and the link for the Siemens site pops up in the first few results. Now, this is the product information for the cable I'm currently using in this video. As you know, cables are sold by the length. As you can see here, with this order number, the length for the cable you receive will be 200 meters, which is about 650 feet. So if you need a different cable length for your project, you may want to consider a different order number when placing your order. Now, where can you find the order numbers for different lengths of this cable? For that, you can click on this link here on the top of the page, which says Profibus Bus Cables. Here in this page, you can see a list of order numbers for the same cable, but with different lengths. For instance, with this order number, the cable length will be 20 meters, which is about 65 feet. Or with this order number, the length for the Profibus cable will be 50 meters or 160 feet. So depending on the project requirements, you can select a different order number when placing your order. I'm also holding a Profibus connector in my hand. This is the order number for this connector. Just as you did for the cable, you can Google this order number if you want more info on this module. We will put a link below this video to the Siemens website for both the cable and the connector. Now, let's see how you can connect the cable to the connector. Here, we have a Profibus cable that we're going to connect to our DB9 Profibus connector. The items that I'm using for this task are a DB9 Profibus connector, a Profibus cable, a utility knife, a screwdriver, and diagonal pliers or wire cutters. The Profibus cable is a shielded twisted pair. We describe the outside as the outer sheath, followed by a braided shield, a foil shield, an inner sheath, and two single core wires one green and one red. The first thing that I need to do is to strip the outer sheath or the purple plastic outer cover. I'll measure about two inches of cable, which is approximately two thirds the length of my index finger. I'll begin stripping the outer sheath by carefully scoring the plastic with a utility knife. Under ideal circumstances, I would use a Profibus Fast Connect stripping tool to strip the Profibus cable, but in a pinch, I'm using a utility knife. You may use that or any other appropriate tool that you may have available. I'll cut around the entire sheath, being careful not to cut too deep into the cable, and continue scoring the plastic until I've cut entirely through the sheath. Now that I've cut around the outer sheath completely, I need to make a cut from the scored area to the end of the cable. Once I think that I've cut through, I'm going to try to remove the outer sheath. If you're unable to remove it, go back and continue to cut until you can successfully remove the outer sheath
to expose the next layer of cabling, which is the braided shield. In order to remove this layer, I'll use the wire cutters and begin clipping the braid at the cut end. Once a small section of the braid has been clipped, it may be easier to gather the remaining braid to clip it near the stripped end piece. Continue to clip the braid all the way around the cable until you've removed as much of the exposed braid as possible. Once the braided shield has been removed, I'll use the utility knife to score the foil shield to remove it. The foil is fairly easy to remove and won't require much effort. Once the foil is removed, you'll see the inner sheath that is fairly rigid. I'll use the same technique that I used while removing the outer sheath. Once I've completed the cut, I'll remove the inner sheath to expose the wires. As described previously, here we have two single core wires, one green and one red. Separate the wires slightly in preparation for placing them into the Profibus connector. I'll open the connector and you'll see that the internals consist of two cable connection paths. Above the cable opening holes in the bottom of the connector, you'll see two plastic tabs. These tabs, when pressed closed, will pierce the wire sheaths as well as hold them in place. While the connector is held with the cable holes at the bottom, I gently lift the plastic tab on the left to expose the wiring mechanism which will hold both of the wires. Once the cable is properly routed, I'll close the connector and make sure that there is no interference caused by the cable. I secure the connector closed with the embedded screw and my screwdriver. Make sure you don't tighten the screw too much, as this may break the connector. Well, that's it. That's all there is to making a Profibus connection. If you found value in this video, be sure to like us, and as always, feel free to comment below. Did you find this video helpful? Well, we have many more instructional videos for your viewing pleasure. Be sure to subscribe to the Real Pars channel on YouTube. Subscribing ensures that you're notified when new content is available. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you head over to realpars.com to find even more training material for all of your PLC programming needs. We offer many videos to assist you in learning PLC programming and landing that job in the high paying, highly sought after field of automation and controls engineering. Go to realpars.com and subscribe to our highly effective training series now.